That's all I need. <laughs> Yo, look at this rack. <laughs> it's clean as fuck, dude. What are you talking about? Oh, I should have formatted my card. Fucking cold, dude. It's April and it was snowing on the way here. Now it's windy and like 38. Last weekend was Riverside, it was 70 degrees. More bullshit about Tennessee weather, I know, but I wish it would have kept raining or snowing though because this like shooting a dark colored car in the middle of the day, not ideal, but we'll make it work. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my nasal spray. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to load a medium. I'm gonna show you how to load a, a medium format camera film. Medium format film camera. Is that a medium format film camera? Ektar, 100 speed film, Mamiya 645. It's a film camera, medium format. Oops. You can, uh, it's the viewfinder there. Typically with film, you don't get to select your ISO on the fly. So film's kind of ISO priority all the time. So you gotta work around that. You laugh, but at the end, you do have to lick your film at the end. This little adhesive strip is like a stamp. And so to close the film back up, it's not like 35 millimeter where you can just roll it back up. Typically you gotta cut this. So I brought my knife, that's it. Run it through, break the seal. I don't know why I shoot medium format film. It's kind of a huge pain. So this is your film back. Change the empty spool to your catch. Close it up, unwrap your shitty present. Load this boy up here. I'll bring this up later. Older cameras have a lot of weird quirks. This one included. So you pull the film through, kind of sweep it around, sort of tighten it up. Make sure it's kind of tight across the film back. You got these arrows here, match it up with this arrow here, roughly like right there. So that's that. Make sure my camera's back at start. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, now we're ready. What's up, bro? My hands are already cold. I did my nasal spray, so I'm not sniffling this time. Oh, I shit myself actually. That's what the shit, I just shit myself as soon as we got here because I was so excited to shoot your car. Like a little excitement, you know when you get kind of nervous and it starts groundhogging? Like one of those. Wow. Damn, look at that ass. So mediocre. <laughs> My wonderful co-host today over here is just going to talk shit the whole time while I'm trying to be informational. There's some trash in the road. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just shooting film. Oh, Someone, fuck. Someone's fucking cringing in the comments right now. These cameras are very delicate. You gotta be <laughs> super careful. My car is in the shop. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> oh, it's so good right here. Oh, my God. Keep talking. I'm trying to get focused. No, Just I, like that? Yeah. <laughs> We're the Sniff Sisters. <laughs> but actually, so when it comes to shooting film, uh, when it comes to shooting film, you gotta kind of pick your battles a little bit more. Digital's great because you can kind of you can experiment a little bit more. You can kind of figure out like, oh, this shot works. This doesn't work with film. You don't get to immediately review your work, so it kind of forces you to slow down just a bit more. Think about like, okay, I've got. 15 shots on a roll of film. How can I like best stretch this? Cause also film is not cheap anymore. It sucks. But when you're shooting film, it's really great when a stock Subaru comes. <laughs> Call me stock Subaru. Go down there and turn around real quick. Hey, you been down to that cul-de-sac before? That one's incredible. K-O-L-L-E. <laughs> Mike owns several businesses. What the fuck is the deal? <laughs> Stuck. I'm gonna be honest, I think we should just move spots. It's so limited here. It used to be trees all down yonder. Of course they need more apartments, cause like, look, apartment, 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 more apartments. Oh wait, more apartments down there? We need another development of apartments in Knoxville, so. You don't even fucking live here. My fog lights still don't work, but I bought new ones and they came a couple days before Riverside. So I was like, yeah, who needs them to work though? What is that Back to you, to Tim. Because like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Thanks for the update, I'll Jimbo. Just sit here. There, yeah, this is good. I've never thought about this angle before. <laughs> 
you want me to put my balls back on the top of your pit? No, I got your the head? shot. It's fine. Okay. What? <laughs> you said like it's fucking recess in preschool right now. I'm aired out, boy. I got, I got that angle support from me. I wasn't kidding. Can someone help me up? <laughs> I'm stuck. I beached myself. <laughs> you beached yourself. Oh. Teamwork. Okay, let's go to a different spot. That building looks depressing as fuck. Let's go. Sick. Oh my god. Poor you man. have been lied to. We have been lied to. It's, it's better than the last spot. There's some rain over there and overcast clouds and I want that to stay. It is really cool in the sun, I will say. It's got like a gold kind of flake to it in a sense. I know it's a wrap, but. Yeah, I like to come in the middle of the day too. <laughs> so I've got this sort of lens filter. Unlike Benny who wants to eliminate extra stuff in a scene with a polarizer, I've got stuff that adds, it's like a little, cross star filter. Something about film using using whatever you have at your disposal to create like physical effects in like the film emulsion itself always kind of stood out. It's super overcast right now. So like a lot of like really big light highlights aren't really present that you would get with like sun, but like stuff like this chrome trim or like these door handles or the wheels will bring out like these huge starbursts with this lens. And so for me, especially when I'm shooting, a lot of times when I'm shooting like greenier film, like uh, higher speed stuff, I try to look more for texture, less than like the subject matter itself. Like what cool texture can I find? So example, the sun's coming out and you can see where the light is kind of hitting these high spots here. Trying to find those in the chrome has been sort of my go-to. Using this little magnifier, helps me get in really tight focus here because you sometimes can't perfect focus just looking down in here. Also, you gotta measure your light pretty much every time because it's stupid that way. Why the fuck do I shoot film? Yeah. For me, I recently have been taken a lot to shooting a lot more detail shots. And I think I've always had that sort of like mindset where it's like, I wanna encompass the entire car edge to edge in the frame where the entire thing is just car and I focus on like one small detail. So here lately, I've just been focusing on like really like hot high points of light to get that like kind of sparkle. Whereas like Benny is a actual photographer and, and goes towards like composition. I'm just like, I just like, Shooting I've never shiny once, shit. I've never once. When you when you have something on like a, a physical format, it just my brain wants to look for these differences in texture. So like like rough concrete and like polished chrome or like this foliage meeting paint is texturally a good thing. I shoot a lot of black and white film and you don't get contrast and color. So you have to look at things like texture, look at things like light to essentially, you know, make sure your image comes out the way you want. Also with film, you get like 15 shots for a whole roll and uh, you may get like five or six out of the entire roll that you like, which is not great, but you know, sometimes you get lucky. You get like a tangential line of like the car kind of like all the lines in the car coming up and following up this way. But this is another like texture thing I was talking about where you've got all this like concrete and if you look down, I don't know, can you like shoot down into this? I, wait, it's mirrored? Yeah, so if I turn this way, it's it's a lot to get used to. And that's why it takes me like longer than it should to get shots. And a lot of times shooting film, I miss out on those really cool like spur of the moment, like shots that are just like, someone happens to be walking by or like a cool, like if you're doing night stuff and you get like lights coming by or something like that. More often than not, I've probably missed 
those like really, really sick shots because I'm sitting here plotting forever how to get this like perfect. As you can see, I'm still trying to figure out the best way. Oh. I'm putting some foliage sort of in front of my lens here to create foreground sort of like depth to Benny Wiles special. I'm gonna get the magnifier out. There it goes. So typically I try to find the shot that I want. I compose it as normal. Then you add in the silly shit like this. I'll do this or I'll use like CDs or like even like shiny objects. Like sometimes you get like a, like a polished knife blade or like a CD and just hold it in front of the lens to get some of that weird foreground stuff. You know, maybe you're shooting somewhere where there's not a lot going on besides your subject and you wanna make the photos a bit more interesting. And I like the pink because everything in this shot is green. Everything in the shot's green, 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 gray and green, silver and green. And like that in and of itself is really cool, but sometimes I like to add little pops of color elsewhere. Uh, the bad part is, is again with film, I don't know if it's gonna look good or not when it comes out. I can't immediately review them. You're like, oh yeah, cool, let's keep doing that. So it's kind of a gamble. All this is sort of kind of by the seat of your pants. Oh my that was, God. That was a good one. <laughs> you just popped my jaw. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I'll point our cameras at Mike, make him feel great. How does this feel, Mike? There it is. I'm gonna get a beautiful portrait of Mason real quick. Super low angle, and I always thought like, oh yeah, you've got this magnifier, it's great. I'm basically gonna have to like lay down. All this for a real mediocre ass shot. Lovely. If this might be, if this ends up being the best shot of the day, I'm gonna be fucking mad. So the shots I'm looking for and the shots Benny are looking for, Benny are? Benny is? Are totally different. Again, like the, it, the car probably needs to go back, but I'm looking for this hot spot in the chrome to be exactly where I want it to be. I'm turning my star filter to where the starburst follows the guardrail here. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Just kind of shooting through the tree to give a little bit of foreground and kind of just framing the car. Pretty much how Liam had it in the video a second ago, just like right here. I wish I had a tighter lens and I could shoot further back. Doesn't matter, I got the shot. Anyways, we get to do my favorite part. So when a roll of film is done, you get to take it out. It's best to do this like not in direct sunlight, but fuck it, who cares? So I pull this out. You've got this little foldy boy here and you got this tail and this tail, no shit, has adhesive. You lick it, you stick it and then shove it up your ass. So we're gonna move over to the other side of the building just cause there's, when I was looking on street view, I was looking from this like off ramp right here. And when you look towards this side of the building, you get some of the skyline in the back. The way the light was hitting the back of the building and casting a shadow like through here was pretty cool. But of course, don't know if the sun's gonna stay out. It's very unpredictable today. So just park with the front facing like here. Oh my God, Damn. this wind. Like I don't even wanna shoot cause it's just fucking cold. I ran out of film, so I got a new camera. Just throw the old camera away. I don't understand why people don't think film's not expensive. You just throw the whole camera away. Just trying to get more foreground in the shot. I got all the foreground I need, baby. Quick, somebody take a picture of me, taking a picture of Liam, taking a picture of Betty, take a picture of the car. My lips are gonna chop out here, fucking blustering, bro. Yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, it's a little bit blustery outside. Reminds me of the fucking old boggy London town. Fucking what, mate? You fucking what? Swear me mama hooking the fucking gabba, mate. Me, oh, me, me and your fucking nan, we had a fucking shag, all right? Uh, you looking you for a fucking proper rumble, mate? Dude, my, my nan's a good lay, I'll tell you what. <laughs> fuck, fuck. God damn it, it's going away. No. It already went away. No. It already went away. I just want one photo of the car in the shadow with the light. Ah. Sun, hey, get out of the shot. The sun's coming out. Yeah, it's already gone. Are you wow, did fucking? You see how fast that shadow went away? I watched that Dude, happen. Dude, as that soon as crazy. I got focused, it was going away. The fucking sun's coming. You see right there. 
Now I just need the sun to get back out. This is full service right here. Is this sex? <laughs> this is sex. I've never had sex before. <laughs> Did I come? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! Shadow! Oh! Shadow! So apparently, Photography is a lot like cavemen discovering fire. Benny and I's two shared brain cells. Just immediately, his synapses started firing. He shrieked, shouts of glee. What's the problem? <laughs> All right, sun's out, gun's out, bun's out. It's the proper rumble I was asking for, mate. By God, that man has a family. I'm starting to sniffle more now. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the shadow of that line is coming straight towards me. What are you laughing at? You're on camera. Be professional. <laughs> oh, fuck. I like made my jaw muscle. I was trying not to smile. I was trying to be serious. As I was explaining, the line of the shadow right there is just coming straight towards me. Looks really cool when the car is in the shadow and you're able to expose correctly to get everything else, or you could just edit it that way. Do what you want. Educational. I'm afraid the rapid climate change is going to kill us before I'm 50. Ah! <laughs> well, you know, no. I think I'm good on this spot. I think we exhausted all the angles. Well, not all of them. There's probably a billion angles we could do here. You Unless want pizza? You guys end up rolling out earlier. Pisser, pisser. Yeah, pisser, pisser. I love piss. <laughs> I love piss. <laughs> Y'all don't get the funny parts of our conversations. The Suganese. Do you want to fuck later? It's all right, man. Super, super so look at these nuts, you fucking Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah, Hibachi pizza, best burritos in town. I never want a job that has... What's up, guys? Uh, I know this video was mainly more about Mason shooting film and the process that goes into that, specifically medium format. It was, uh, it was a cool learning experience for me as well because I have not stepped into the world of medium format. I have been shooting 35 millimeter film for a while. And on that note, actually, if anyone wants to do more shoots like this on 35 millimeter or something like that, if any of you specialize in something like that and you feel that you want to show off your skills, fucking hit us up. It'll be fun. But anyways, I just wanted to show off a few of my digital photos that I got just because I was really proud of them. I really like this spot and it was just a fun shoot overall. Um, so this first one is when we got to the uh, second spot. So that first spot just didn't work out. Too bright, too weird, gross orange clay, all that. So this spot was just really cool. Very depressing building, um, but kind of a very like brutalist uh, architecture style. And I really enjoy that for photos. There's a lot of angles and shadows and highlights and lines and all sorts of shit going on with it. And it just looks cool. So I really like this shot because it just shows off that sort of architecture, shows off the car kind of matching the green tones in the trees. Just a cool shot overall. Um, looking at it now, I probably could have cloned out a couple of things at the bottom, but you know, so it goes. The next one actually was at the first spot. It's one of the only, I think if not the only black and white one I edited from this set. And the reason being was because my polarizer did some weird stuff with uh, his tint on his passenger window. So just to eliminate those like weird rainbowy colors, I went black and white. Worked out really well because uh, being in the middle of the day and the sun, the, the sun, the sun shining down directly from above us, just highlighted this body line going down the side of his car, and there were no real like overwhelming highlights on the very side of his car. So it was just a cool contrast, captured that uh, body line really well, and I really like how it looked in black and white. I guess the last one would be when we were fighting with the clouds to get the sun to come out when we had moved his car around uh, to the corner. I just really like the how it looks, the balance between the shadows and the highlights and stuff, the, the angle of the shadow kind of coming towards you and then racing out the side of the photo. I feel like I was able to position his car pretty well there. Could have done something different with it, but I like it. Yeah, overall it was just a fun shoot. If you guys enjoyed these photos, uh, I'm. I posted more of them on my Instagram. Mason also posted more on his Instagram. We could, I think, put them in the description. Yeah, thanks for watching though. Uh, can't wait to do more of these. See you guys soon.